Can you imagine Argentina as one of the most powerful countries in the world? Can you see the country as a global superpower, with its capital Buenos Aires once even being called the Paris of South America? If we go back more than a century, Argentina was at the peak of its tourism appeal, mainly due to its architecture, fashion, and cuisine. The country was one of the richest and most powerful places on the planet. To give you an idea, the per capita GDP of our Argentinian neighbors surpassed that of Japan and Germany, which are currently among the world's largest economies. In the early 20th century, Argentina was one of the most promising economic powers in the world. Many believed the country could become a rival to the United States in the Americas. But unfortunately, everything started to go very wrong. And since then, decade after decade, Argentina has been facing a series of severe economic crises. Even with so many problems, Argentina remains a spectacle of natural beauty with its stunning landscapes. From the majestic Andes Mountains to the vast Pampas Plains, the country is a mosaic of incredible sceneries. Patagonia, a paradise for nature lovers, showcases towering glaciers and crystal clear lakes. While Noel Huapi National Park dazzles with its lush forests and sky touching mountains. Let's not forget the Iguazu Falls, at the triple border of Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay, a spectacle of grandeur and beauty. The geographical diversity of Argentina is not limited to its land. The wineries in Mendoza produce delicious wines amidst valleys that look like living paintings. Additionally, the beaches along the Atlantic coast, such as those in the Valdez Peninsula, offer magical encounters with marine life, including whales, sea lions, and penguins. How is it possible for a country rich in natural beauty, which was once a superpower, to become a laughingstock? And how does it remain in this endless cycle of poverty? Well, if we go back to the 1920s, we will see that Argentina was at its peak. The country was growing economically at a fast pace. Besides the countries I mentioned earlier, Argentina's per capita GDP was at the level of France or Canada, and everyone wanted to invest and live there. One of the secrets to Argentina's great success in the early 20th century was agriculture. The Pampas region in the south of the country was extremely fertile and produced large quantities of wheat, meat, and leather. Argentina became the leading exporter of these commodities. The country also had a pro-immigration culture and encouraged the arrival of new people. To this end, it even offered financial incentives, such as free passages and cheap land. As a result, millions of Europeans, mainly from Italy, Spain, and Portugal, immigrated to Argentina. From 1870 to 1914, Argentina's population nearly quadrupled. The economy boomed with workers, farmers, and entrepreneurs arriving from all over. Buenos Aires became almost a South American Paris, with a strong mix of cultures and full of opportunities. But then, from the mid-20th century onwards, things began to change drastically. Argentina did not become the superpower many expected, but instead entered a cycle of economic crises and significant political instability. The governments that came to power made a series of choices that led the country to failure. Inflation and currency devaluation made investment and economic growth difficult. Political instability hindered economic decision-making. The fiscal deficit fueled inflation and currency devaluation. From the start, much like the United States, Argentina had a vast territory perfect for agriculture. However, the government made a decision that would alter the course of the country's economic history. 
Instead of distributing the land equitably, it chose to sell it to a select group of farmers, creating a monopoly that ultimately hampered Argentina's economic development. This monopoly not only generated significant profits for the privileged farmers, but also stifled the country's economic growth. Without the pressure of competition, these farmers continued to produce the same commodities for export, avoiding ventures into new sectors. The outcome was an over-reliance on agriculture, transforming Argentina into a mere exporter of commodities, without a real boost to its industrial and service sectors. By choosing this path, Argentina missed the chance to diversify its economy and build a solid foundation for sustainable development. This decision shaped the nation's economic trajectory for decades. When the Great Depression hit in the 1930s and global demand for Argentine products plummeted, the country found itself in a tough spot. While the rest of the world was shifting towards industrialization, Argentina remained steadfast in its dependence on agriculture. Things got even more complicated in the 1940s when a military coup occurred and Juan Domingo Perón emerged as the leader. Perón had a different approach to fixing the economy. While the rest of the world was experiencing a post-war economic boom, Argentina took a wrong turn. It closed its doors, imposed a series of tariffs, restricted exports, and took control of entire sectors, nationalizing almost everything. You don't need me to tell you that it all went wrong. Even after Perón was overthrown in the 1950s, his damaging ideology lingered. He left behind a legacy of extensive social benefits and subsidies for the needy. Under his leadership, the Argentine working class enjoyed the highest wages in Latin America. It seemed like a dream, right? But the reality was different. The country couldn't afford all of this. The economy was sinking, and to maintain these benefits, Argentina began drowning in debt. The result? Rampant inflation, the country's currency rapidly losing value, and a national debt that spiraled out of control. It felt like a party while it lasted, but the aftermath was a severe economic hangover. Argentina entered a crazy cycle of political instability, with governments unable to manage the economy. In the 1980s, to divert attention from the crisis, there was even a disastrous invasion of the Falkland Islands. On April 2, 1982, Argentine armed forces invaded the Falkland Islands, an archipelago located in the South Atlantic Ocean, about 400 kilometers off the coast of Argentina. The Falklands had been under British control since 1833, and the Argentine invasion was a direct challenge to British sovereignty. The invasion was a total fiasco, both militarily and politically. Argentine troops were soundly defeated by British forces in a conflict that lasted two months. The war ended on June 14, 1982, when Argentine forces surrendered for good. The sting of defeat was a severe blow to the Argentine military government. The people in Argentina weren't taking it lightly and demanded the government's resignation. The result? In 1983, the population called for the government's ousting, and it was overthrown in the same year. The truth is that over the decades, Argentina's leaders had numerous opportunities to change the country's course, but it seems they always chose the worst path. In the end, the Argentine government appears incapable of learning from its mistakes and continues to repeat the same errors. As the saying goes, Argentina never misses an opportunity to miss an opportunity. And speaking of traveling, did you know there's a way to get cheaper flights to any destination in just three minutes? Cheaper than the flights you spend days searching for and comparing prices? There's a free website that explains how it works. To find out, just click on the link in the first pinned comment. After watching this video, hurry over to check it out.
1989, inflation hit a record high of 5,000%. The population was desperate, and looting of supermarkets became common. People were frantic for food and basic items, unable to afford the inflated prices. In 1991, a new president, Carlos Menem, was elected. Menem decided to adopt a strategy to stabilize the currency against the US dollar. This strategy, known as convertibility, established a fixed exchange rate between the peso and the dollar. Menem's strategy worked in the short term. Inflation dropped to lower levels and the currency stabilized. However, convertibility came at a cost. Argentina could no longer print money to finance its expenditures, meaning the government needed to find other ways to raise money. Argentina already had a significant fiscal deficit before the 1989 crisis. Convertibility made this deficit even larger. The government needed to raise more money to cover its expenses but was constrained. So, the Argentine government decided to finance its deficit with loans from foreign investors and the International Monetary Fund, IMF. But the problem was that these loans only delayed the fiscal crisis. Since the plan to reduce public spending never materialized, the Argentine government continued to spend more than it collected. The country went on a spending spree that the economy couldn't sustain. This time, the spending spree was funded by loans from foreign investors and the IMF. This was when Argentina's fiscal crisis reached its breaking point in 2001. The government could no longer pay its loans, and convertibility was abandoned. Inflation soared again, and the currency devalued. This crisis was a disaster. The economy collapsed, and the country was plunged deeper into poverty. The crisis led to the fall of the Menem government, and Argentina entered yet another period of political instability. After losing access to additional IMF financing, Argentina faced the largest sovereign default in history. This caused a new wave of riots and protests from the population, who were furious at the government's mismanagement and incompetence. Over the last 20 years, Argentina has experienced a real economic roller coaster. Today, economic challenges still persist. The government continues to spend beyond its means resorting to printing money to cover costs and devaluing the currency, which only exacerbates inflation. As a result, inflation has surpassed 120%. The Argentinians have just elected a new representative who campaigned on a platform with various measures, some quite controversial. Among these measures are promises to cut public spending, eliminate the central bank, and dollarize the economy. Only time will tell how these changes will unfold. In this documentary, we've shown you that Argentina, once called the Paris of South America, is now unfortunately one of the worst places in the world to live. And just like Argentina, there are many other failed places, and learning about them will make you 10 times more grateful for the life you have, regardless of your difficulties. These are places that traditional media will never show you in detail because there are conflicts of interest behind it all. Watch now by clicking on the screen to learn about another Latin American country, one of the most mysterious in the world, Peru, and its incredibly rich history and don't forget to click on the link in the first pinned comment. See you there.